This is it. This is the big announcement that has been hyped up ever since CES with the Zen 2 architecture. This is AMD's latest 7 nanometer CPUs that is going head to head with Intel. And this is a big one because they're changing from Global Foundry's 12 nanometer and they're going, as we said just before, to 7 nanometer. But they've also announced three new SKUs this time around and we'll go over the details of them as well as looking at AMD's preview that they announced with the Navi GPU architecture. So getting straight into these details for you guys, the biggest improvement is the 15% IPC. That's instructions per cycle. This is a massive gain considering this is 2019. And we've seen in the past, even with AMD going from Ryzen 1000 to 2000 on the CPUs, they only got around a 3% IPC increase. But this time around, it's absolutely massive. And that is a 15% IPC over the previous 2000 series chips. Now they've also gone two times the cache size. This is very important, of course, to get those IPC improvements. AMD also stated this was a prerequisite to get the best gaming performance possible. Now starting off with the first chip, and honestly, I think the most anticipated chip, at least when I announced these details at CES, this is the Ryzen 7 3700X, eight cores, 16 threads. They're announcing a 4.4 gigahertz single core boost clock, as well as 3.6 gigahertz across all cores out of the box. This is coming in at $329, has 36 megabytes of cache, as well as a 65 watt TDP. And by the way, all the CPUs I'm talking about here today will be released on July 7th. The next CPU to go through is the Ryzen 7 3800X. Pretty much a similar thing to the Ryzen 7 uh, 3700X, except they have upped the clock speeds to 3.9 gigahertz and a 4.5 gigahertz single core boost, as well as offering this CPU for $399. The TDP rating has also gone up from 65 watts to 105 watts. And we will talk about that a little bit later after we get over this next chip. And this is the Ryzen 9 3900X, 3.8 gigahertz boost across all cores and a 4.6 gigahertz boost on the single core performance. 70 megabytes of cache in total, 105 watt TDP, as well as having 12 cores and 24 threads. Now they did show some benchmarks here. The first was the 3700X versus the 9700K. The next test that they showed was the 3800X versus the 9900K in PUBG and the FPS was looking really good for the Ryzen 7 3800X. Now this does indicate one thing to me personally and that is that the 8 core 16 threaded parts are going to only be on one die and then that die is then connected to the input output chiplet. So AMD did talk about a chiplet design here and as I said at CES I was looking forward to the 8 core 16 threaded option because it looks like that latency is going to be the lowest across all Zen CPUs. And this in turn will make it AMD's gaming champion. But the last benchmark they showed was where the 3900X was going up against the 9920X, which is a HEDT platform CPU. And of course comes in at a much more expensive price point. This is $499 they showed it going 32 seconds versus 38 seconds in Blender. And these results were looking very good for AMD. And the last thing AMD talked about in relation to the CPUs and also their Navi GPUs, which we'll talk about later too, was PCIe 4.0 support on the latest X570 motherboard chipsets. They're also still using DDR4 memory, but they didn't really give out any details in relation to the out of the box memory speed supported, as well as how high things can go. But rumor has it from overclockers I've spoke to, they have got dual channel sticks up to around 4.4 gigahertz on the 16 core variant. Though of course, one thing you guys wanna know about, of course, is the all core clock speeds. How much are these things realistically gonna overclock in the real world? Now I did manage to meet up with a few people behind the scenes here and get some sneak footage from the water cooling guys. And they were saying that there is a 16 core 32 threaded option and they did overclock it on water. And here's the kicker though, it did go up to around 4.1 gigahertz on what you would consider everyday overclocks and they did manage to get it just shy of 4.3 gigahertz on all cores for those one-time runs. So stability-wise, it's looking like it's going to top out at maybe 4.1 gigahertz, but keep in mind that is an engineering sample, but in the case of AMD, I hear that they do provide uh, some of these chipset vendors 
the engineer examples that are really close to the retail samples. And another thing that I did also hear this time around was that this was one of the tightest releases ever in that they didn't let any information slip at all. And in fact, a lot of the chipset vendors had all closed rooms where they had a person in charge. So if third parties wanted to test coolers, for example, they had to send the cooler in to that lab, get that person in charge in that lab to test it and then give them the results. But basically everything you guys heard with the rumors of going five gigahertz across all cores was a little bit outlandish, but the IPC is super impressive. That 15% increase is absolutely massive plus the fact that they've coupled it on seven nanometer and the power consumption, the 65 watt TDP, for example, on the 3700X, that is one thing to look forward to. Very impressive announcement, especially when it comes to the CPU side of things. Next up is Navi GPUs. These are going to be talked about more in depth with a full detail reveal at E3. However, they did give us a hint of performance and they did let us know some big news and that is it's the RDNA architecture, which is completely different from GCN. It's got PCIe 4.0 enabled. It's got faster clock speeds. It's also got better performance per clock going at 1.25 times. And then they've also got 1.5 times better performance per watt. Now they are naming these the RX 5000 series and they did have on display the RX 5700 and they did put it up against an RTX 2070. And the game they decided to display was Strange Brigade Obviously, this is an AMD favored title, but the performance was looking really good, especially since this does look like it's a mid-range card. But what does remain to be seen is a full skew detail of how many models they're releasing. Is the Radeon 7 still going to be their top performing GPU in the stack? And also on that note, the price and also entry, mid-range and high-end GPUs in this architecture all remain to be seen, but I will be reporting on that for you guys when I get the chance. And with all that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you wanna see more of Computex, all the latest products that are coming out and the inside scoop on them, then be sure to hit that sub button and ring the bell to get notified as soon as these videos drop. And if you enjoyed this one as well, drop a comment. Let us know what you think about the new Ryzen 3000 series chips coming out on the CPUs, the Zen 2 architecture. That does look like it's very promising. I can't wait to get my hands on it, test it for you guys, run it through all the benchmarks, give you the ultimate verdict. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.